In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a more correct method for the common latent factor approach to accounting for common method bias. Now, in a previous video, I've shown you how to do this. I showed you that you create this common latent factor and you constrain all the regression weights to equal A or something like that. And then you run it and then you square the unstandardized uh, results and you get the percentage of common method bias. Now that is a way to do it. It's not the most correct way uh, upon a closer reading of Podsikoff et al. 2003. So I'm going to show you the more correct way to do this. What you do is you run it with and without the common latent factor and then you compare the standardized regression weights, which I will do now. So we run this. I hope it runs quickly. Go get the estimates. Standardized regression weights. Copy that. Stick it in Excel. Let's create a new work. There we go. Paste. Now remember that this is with the CLF. CLF. Let's go back. And just delete the CLF here. And run it again. Grab the estimates. Paste them in there. And this is with without CLF. No CLF. And then compare them. This is the delta or the difference. So equals this estimate, which is always going to be higher. Well, for the most part, the uh, estimate without the CLF is going to be higher than the one with. And you subtract that estimate from that estimate. Enter and drag it down for all those you actually care about there. And then you can do conditional formatting to make it quick and easy. Highlight cell rules uh, greater than. I like to use 0.2 for my CLF, for my common method bias. And it looks like you have three paths that seem to be affected by common method bias. Because they, have a, they show a great difference when you add the common latent factor, which is extracting part of the variance that was explained by these indicators for these latent factors. So, uh, for example, two-way communication, TWC, seems to have two-thirds, uh, there are only three indicators, two-thirds of the indicators are largely affected by common method bias. This means that I need to retain the common latent factor when I move on to my structural model. Well, how do I do that? What you do is you just go back to the one model where you had the common latent factor in it. And if you're going to use composites by imputing using factor scores, then you just leave this common latent factor in. What it does is, let me show you, it, re it uses these estimates up here. Oh, come on, show me the estimates. There we go. It uses these regression weights, these loadings, uh, here instead of what you had before when you didn't have the common latent factor. These loadings are lower than they used to be because some of the variance that is being explained by these indicators is, or was being explained by these indicators is now being explained by this common latent factor. It sort of parceled out that m variance which was explained by the method, the method variance. And so now when you create composites based on the factor scores, you're only creating them based on these new slightly lower values. So you're creating what's called common method bias adjusted composites. Hit proceed and impute and hope it works. Yep, it worked. So now the new composite variables that I have are based, are the, well, they're common method bias adjusted. So I can use those and it's like I have retained this common latent factor in my model. Now, do you, when you go to build that structural model with those composites, you don't include this common variable. It's already in there, hidden in the background. Um, its presence is there. You do not drag a common variable into a structural model um, when you're using those composites. Now, if you're using this uh, full SEM model to create a new structural model, uh, for example, if you're going to just get rid of some of these lines here and start drawing regression lines, well, then you leave the common latent factor in there. Yeah. So let's say, for example, we have a model that 
uh, has all these independent variables that we have covariated, and then they all predict immersion and perceived ease of use, right? Something like that. Well, we just add those error terms there. Name unobserved variables, and we run it, and we leave that common latent factor in there. So it's, we're still accounting for common method bias. And so our results are common method bias adjusted. And hit up. And we see these regression weights just like normal, but they're adjusted for common method bias. Cool. Hope that helps.